Today we're going to look at six classical means and then we're going to notice what kind of binds them together into a single definition via an integral. So before we get started, let's recall six of these classical means that I'm talking about. So let's say we've got positive real numbers. So A is bigger than zero and B is bigger than A. We might as well put them in that order. It's not super interesting if A and B are the same, so we won't look at that case. Then the arithmetic mean, well, that's simply the average. It's half their sum. The geometric mean, that's the square root of their product. The harmonic mean, so that's two over the sum of their reciprocals. And then the logarithmic mean, which we've looked at on the channel before, is B minus A over natural log of B minus natural log of A. And then we've got two that have not been on the channel before, the so-called Heronian mean, which is a plus the square root of ab plus b all over three. And then we have this thing called the centroidal mean, which is two thirds. And then in the numerator, we have a squared plus ab plus b squared. And the denominator, we have a plus b. So first, what we'd like to do is somehow mash all of these together into a single shape. So let's maybe start doing that. So I'm just going to put here, let's note that we can take this one half B plus A. So in other words, the arithmetic mean, and I'm going to multiply the numerator as well as the denominator by A minus B or B minus A, I should say. So that's going to leave me with one half B squared minus A squared all over B minus A. Okay, nice. So let's maybe look at another one before we start putting all of this together. So let's take this harmonic mean. So that's two over one over B plus one over A. I'll switch the order there. And now let's observe that that's the same thing as two times one over B plus one over A, sorry, minus one over A over one over B squared minus one over A squared. So we simply multiplied the numerator and the denominator there both by one over B minus one over A. Okay, let's look at one more. So let's take this Heronian mean. So this is A plus the square root of AB plus B all over three. Now it's a little bit trickier here, but what we'll do is we'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by B to the half minus A to the half or square root of B minus square root of A. So the cool thing is what happens up here in the numerator is the following. That's gonna turn into Let's see, b to the 3 halves minus a to the 3 halves. And then in the denominator there, we're going to have b to the half minus a to the half. And then I've got this 1 over 3 here. But I'm actually going to write that 1 over 3 a little bit differently. Perhaps I'll write that as a 2 here and then a two thirds in the numerator. And now I think we can see how this is shaping up. Notice we've got one over this exponent and then b squared minus a squared over one over the exponent, which is one over one times b minus a. So in other words, we've got an exponent which is one larger in the numerator and that's happening everywhere. That's happening here as well. And perhaps if we were to move this down to a one half in the denominator, it would look even better. So let's maybe start to tie this together. So this is simply equal to one half and then X squared evaluated from A to B over X evaluated from A to B. In other words, it's the integral from a to b of x dx over the integral from a to b of 1 dx. Okay, and then, well, let's see, do these satisfy a similar rule? Well, let's go down here to this one. 
So this looks like two thirds x to the three halves evaluated from a to b all over, let's see, two x to the half evaluated from a to b. But now we can rewrite that as an integral as well. That's the integral from a to b of x to the half dx over the integral from a to b of x to the negative half dx. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Notice that the exponent in the numerator is one more than the exponent in the denominator. That's the same thing that's happening up here as well. Now, can we do this here? And in fact, we can. So that's gonna turn out to be the integral from a to b of, let's see, that numerator is going to come from one over x squared dx, and that denominator comes from one over x cubed dx. Of course, a couple of minus signs are canceling in, bo in both of those cases. So uh, let's maybe make the big observation here. So all of these look like the following. So I'll call this function f of t, and it's the integral from a to b of x to the t plus 1 dx over the integral from a to b of x to the t dx. So in other words, what we seem to have here is an integral of a power of x in the denominator and an integral of a larger power of x by one in the numerator. And that's actually occurring for all of these. So in this language, this is f evaluated at zero. In this language, this is f evaluated at negative three. And here, this is f evaluated at negative half. So now what we'd like to do is, well, make sure that the rest of these satisfy this rule. So let's see which ones we've taken care of. We've taken care of this arithmetic mean, we took care of this harmonic mean, and we took care of this Heronian mean. So let's make sure that these three remaining means also follow this form. And then we'll see what we can do with this new expression that binds all of these means together. So, so far, we motivated the definition of this function f of t as the integral from a to b of x to the t plus 1 dx over the integral from a to b of x to the t dx. Oh, and before we go further, I'd like to point out that I found this in a mathematics magazine article from 2005. So that's, uh, the information is up at the top of the board right here. And then we also observed that the arithmetic mean was this function evaluated at zero, the harmonic mean was this function evaluated at negative three, and this Heronian mean was the function evaluated at negative half. Now let's see what goes on for the following remaining means. Let's maybe start with the logarithmic mean. as. That one is maybe the most obvious so far. We can probably just guess looking at the fact that we've got this difference of logarithms here, and it's gonna be f of negative one. So here we have the integral from a to b dx over the integral from a to b of dx over x, but that very, very quickly becomes b minus a over log b minus log a. Okay, so there we have it. We have our logarithmic mean, which is f of negative one. Now let's look at our centroidal mean. So this has a nice formula as well, and let's see if we can get at that pretty easily. So let's talk, take our centroidal mean, and I'll just copy it over. So two thirds, we have a squared plus ab plus b squared over um, a plus b. And now I'm going to take the numerator as well as the denominator here and multiply by b minus a. And let's see what that leaves us with. So that's going to leave us with a 2. And then in the numerator, we have b cubed minus a cubed over 3. And then in the denominator, we have b squared minus a squared. But now let's observe that we can rewrite that as 1 third times b cubed minus a cubed over 1 half times b squared minus a squared. 
But looking at it like that, it becomes pretty clear that's equal to f of one. Just keeping in mind how the integration works. Okay, great. So down here we have our centroidal mean, which is f of one. Now, all that remains is the geometric mean. And, well, let's maybe just do a calculation to show what that is. Let's do f of negative 3 halves. I guess I'm giving it away here. You can do some algebraic manipulation to motivate this, but we'll just see how it goes. So this is going to be the integral from a to b of x to the minus half dx over the integral from a to b of x to the minus 3 halves dx. So let's see, the numerator is going to become 2 root x evaluated from a to b. And then the denominator is going to become, let's see, negative 2 over root x evaluated from a to b. Just keeping in mind all of the positive and negative exponents as needed, as, long, as well as the power rule for integration. Okay, so observe that those 2's cancel. And that'll leave us with root b minus root a over, let's see, we'll have 1 over root a minus 1 over root b, where I switched the order of subtraction because of this minus sign. But now we can write that as root b minus root a over root b minus root a over root a b. That's from finding a common denominator for the denominator. But then we get some pretty clear cancellation to square root of a, b, which is obviously the geometric mean. So there we have it. Our geometric mean is this function evaluated at negative 3 halves. Okay, so there's a very classic mean inequality that joins all of these together. And in fact, you can prove that very easily using this function. So let's do that. So let's recall the classical mean inequality. So I made all of these strict inequalities because I'm taking a to be strictly less than b, so they're not equal. So the harmonic mean is less than ge geometric mean, is less than logarithmic, is less than Heronian, is less than arithmetic, is less than centroidal. But now let's look at the values of our function. We have f of negative 3, negative 3 halves, negative 1, negative half, 0, and 1. So the arguments of the function are increasing as the means are increasing. So this gives us an opportunity to prove this mean inequality very, very quickly using our function. And observe that if we can show our function is strictly increasing, then this mean inequality will hold. So how will we show that f is strictly increasing? Well, we're going to do it by showing that the derivative is positive. So let's take that derivative. So observe that we have a quotient of two functions, so we have to use the quotient rule. Also, we'll have to use the derivative of x to the t with respect to t. So observe that our variable is in the exponent. So we'll just see that as we need it. So here we've got the integral from a to b. We're taking the derivative of the numerator. We'll have natural log of x times x to the t plus 1 dx. Well, that's the derivative of x to the t plus 1. Okay, and then we have that just multiplied by the de denominator, which is the integral from a to b of x to the t dx. And then we'll have minus just the plain old numerator. So that's the integral from a to b of x to the t plus 1 dx times the derivative of the denominator. So that's the integral from a to b of natural log of x, x to the t dx. Great. And then that is all over something squared. So since that thing that is in the denominator is always squared, it will not contribute to the sign of the first derivative. So that means we just need to look at the numerator to determine if the first derivative is positive or negative. Okay, so let's take this numerator. Maybe we'll call this entire numerator a, and let's write it two different ways. So let's write it where we do a replacement of variables. First off, we'll replace the undifferentiated terms with, to, from x to y. That'll change our multiplication, our product of two integrals, into a double integral. And then we're going to do 
the reverse uh, substitution. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So we'll have our integral from a to b of natural log of x times x to the t plus 1 dx times the integral from a to b of y to the t dy. So see what I mean? We're taking that undifferentiating ter undifferentiated term and we're just changing the variable of integration. Okay, so same thing for the second term. Integral from a to b of y to the t plus 1 dy and then integral from a to b of natural log of x, x to the t plus 1 dx. But now we can smash all of that together into a double integral. Well, a single double integral because we can smash each of those, you know, products of integrals or iterated integrals, depending on how you want to look at it, into double integrals. That'll look something like this. I have two integrals, both are from a to b. And then let's see what we'll have. We can factor out an x to the t, y to the t from all of the terms. And then we'll be left with something like this, x minus y times natural log of x, dx dy. Okay, great. But then very, very similarly, making the opposite substitution. So just switching x's and y's here, or maybe switching x's and y's here, that won't change anything. We'll have that this is equal to the integral from a to b and the integral from a to b of x to the t, y to the t, and then y minus x, natural log of y dx dy. Okay, so now we've got two expressions for our numerator, which we called a. And, well, what do we want to do now? Well, these two expressions will like play nicely together. That means we could combine them and maybe simplify the whole situation. So let's look at two times a. So if two times a can be shown to be positive, then a is positive. But that means this numerator is positive, but that means that f prime is positive, but that means that f is strictly increasing. So we'll be good to go. So let's look at two times a, but we'll take this version plus this version. So that'll give us the integral from a to b, and then the integral from a to b, x t, uh, y t, and then next up we'll have x minus y, and then next up we'll have natural log of x minus natural log of y, and then we'll have dx dy. Now, before we make our final argument, I'd like to recall this fact up here we're gonna take advantage of, which is that a is less than b. That means we're always like, integrating into a positive direction here. We've got our lower bound, which is smaller than our upper bound. Okay, also the logarithm is an increasing function. So that means that x minus y and natural log of x minus y have the same sign. But if you take the product of two things with the same sign, then that means that this product is positive. I should really be saying that it's bigger than or equal to zero, but it's positive except for on the diagonal here. And the diagonal is a set of measure zero with respect to double integration. So we're integrating something positive, and then x and y both to the t are both positive. And then since a is less than b, dx and dy are also both positive. So everything involved in that integral is positive, meaning that two times a is bigger than zero, leading us to that cascade that ends with f is strictly increasing, giving us this nice proof of the classical mean inequality. And that's a good place to stop.